Hello, gentlemen, and welcome to yet another episode of The Gentleman's Club. I am your host, Mark Antimate, and in today's episode, we're doing yet again another review over another whiskey. And this time, it is a bourbon whiskey from the United States under the name Four Roses. Today is somewhat of a very special review, and... Uh, Plenty of sad stories to tell inside of this episode as well. The first one is that um, it's 7 a.m. in the morning as it stands right now on a Friday morning. And I actually recorded this review last night. And as you can see, I cracked open the bottle for the first time last night. And I did already drink some of this. That's because I conducted this review. But unfortunately trying to handle my camera settings it was a, a very jarring video to watch and there was a whole lot of focusing and getting out of focus again oh, it was it was a very big thing going on with my autofocus and i thought that my viewers wouldn't appreciate watching 20 minutes of this review of this thing just constantly going in and out and so i just decided to just call it quits on that review and just delete it and just start fresh all over from the beginning. So here I am again, reviewing this yet again in less than 24 hours. But actually, you get to see it this time. The other bit of sad news that I have is that um, I was supposed to go to this distillery today. This is uh, the Kirin Gotimba Distillery in Eastern... Uh, Shizuoka Japan and if you don't know Kirin, Kirin makes this whiskey right here the Fuji Sandroku and also they are the owners of the Four Roses distillery and company inside the United States now so I was going to visit their distillery today and I was penciled in and I had a reservation to be there at one o'clock in the afternoon but unfortunately being the manager at the job that I'm at now, uh, duty calls, and I've been called in to work today, so I will have to go there a little bit later. But before I go to work, I just decided to reshoot this review. Now, I will try to get to that distillery soon. I'm just going to have to phone them up later today, uh, past 9 o'clock, and tell them I would like to cancel that 1 o'clock reservation. And I think I'm going to reschedule for uh, 1 p.m. this coming up Monday. Or if not Monday, then it's going to be Tuesday. But definitely within the next week, I will still be going to that distillery. It's just that it's not going to be today. So like I mentioned before, Four Roses has been bought out by Kirin here in Japan. This brand was established in Kentucky in the United States in 1888, as it says here on the bottle. But it was on September 1st, 2015, so uh, roughly two years and two months ago, that Kirin bought out Four Roses. And now that they have a hold of it, I'm quite sure that they're not going to sell it because this company has been sold... Uh, quite a few times actually maybe either once or twice before and this is either the second or third time that this has been bought but now that this giant is in possession I don't think that they're really going to sell it so a little bit about this bottle here is that uh, this is the most standard offering from from uh, Four Roses and this is their cheapest offering I've only paid about 15 US dollars for this, but the Japanese equivalent, since I am in Tokyo, I paid about 1,509 Japanese yen. But again, about 15 US dollars, which is not that expensive for whiskey. This one actually costs about $15 as well. This is a very cheap offering from Kirin. This one is the Fuji Sanroku. And although they're at um, competing prices, I would definitely say 
that this one is a lot better. This is the best bang for buck whiskey that I have tried to date uh, for Japanese whiskey and just just any whiskey uh, for that matter. For fifteen dollars, I think you are getting the most the most price, the most quality. Yeah, just bang for buck. I was trying to think of a new way of saying it, but the best bang for buck for this one. This one, it's it's passable, but it's it's definitely not the best four roses, obviously, but uh, for a Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey, it's. It's decent. It's passable, but it's nothing to write home about. I mean, now that I got this bottle, I'm going to share it with my friends after this review. And it's definitely not something that I'm going to revisit again. I mean, I'm not going to go out of my way to go buy this whiskey again. But like many on YouTube have said before, if you're trying to introduce somebody to whiskey for the first time, uh, to bourbon whiskey, this is definitely one to help get a new whiskey drinker to help pull them in before you introduce them to stronger stuff but it is quite light all right uh, so i have some notes here let's see what i've spoken about already all right so this one is comes in a 700 milliliter bottle and it is 40% ABV, which is uh, 80 US proof. As you can see on my bottle, it says imported, but that's because it's imported from America to Japan, even though we own it. Um, inside the United States, of course, you're not going to have that written on there. Um, let's see. So like I said, that this is the most standard offering. There is about six or seven offerings from the Four Roses Distillery. And actually, we got two limited ones here that are only available in Japan that you don't have inside the United States. And I'll mention about those as I go up the tiers. So this one is just called Four Roses Bourbon. But it can also be called, uh, quote unquote, the Four Roses Yellow Label. Just primarily for the fact that it has a yellow label. People like to call it that. Then there is the next step up, which is called the Four Roses Bourbon Black Label. So it comes inside the exact same bottling and exact same uh, label. But just only the label color is black instead of yellow. And that one is also 40% ABV and 80 proof. But that black label is apparently only available here in Japan, which makes me really want to go seek that out now. That's not inside of my local store, but um, I'm sure I could find that around somewhere if I go to a whiskey specialty shop. So I'm going to be on the lookout for the black label, and I'll give you my opinion on that soon. Then there is the next tier up, which is available, I believe, worldwide. Uh, Four Roses Platinum. And then above that, there's Four Roses Single Barrel. And then there's Four Roses Small Batch. And then there's a second one that's only in Japan called the Four Roses Super Premium, which is 43% ABV, 86 proof. So definitely we'll have to try that at some point. As you can see on the bottle here, it has the master distiller's name, Brent Elliott's name written here. All right, nothing else to say about this. I'm just going to... Oh, yes, actually I do. In Japan, when it comes to cheap whiskeys, they really try to entice you to buy these things, the most standard offerings. So they love to package them with gifts here in Japan. So if you've seen at the beginning of the video, I had this thing sticking over the top and then this thing was also on the top. And if you would not like to know what these are, these were free gifts at no extra added value. So inside of this package here was this thing. This is a glass holder and this is made out of a um, 
I'm at a loss of words right now. Uh, a silicone type uh, gel, very squishy. I don't know what you call the opposite of an embossing, but this is kind of embossed, but it's, it's going in. It's more like an indentation. And as you can see, there's a rose inside of there. Let me move this out of the way. And you have this on your countertop, and then you just simply put your whiskey glass in, inside of there. The other thing that this came with, it says gift for you. It came with a actual whiskey glass. Not a tumbler, not like a Glen Kern style glass, but some somewhat of a hybrid. Uh, you might be able to see the little bit of water beads on there. <laughs> Since this is in 4K, I washed this out maybe about 30 minutes ago, so it still has some water beads left inside of there. But as you can see, this glass has the Four Roses logo on it. And it's kind of in a hourglass type shape. So at the bottom, it starts off small. It gets wider before it tapers back off again and gets thin. And then it flares back out again. So that is quite interesting. This is not the best whiskey glass, but definitely not the worst. For free glass, that's definitely nice. As you can see, my Glen uh, Karen glass, which I also washed out, you can see them side by side. If you were to put this one inside of there, you could see at what depth, how much of the Glen Kern glass I could get down inside of this one. So it is quite a wide mouth, but it still has that, that tapering off to kind of help a little bit with nosing, but it's not... It's not going to be better than this, but still quite nice. And uh, I picked this one up because I plan on having a few friends over for whiskey at some point in time, maybe about uh, three or four total. And I'm going to need some extra glasses for them, maybe even five. So I take whatever I can get. So that was free. All right, let's go ahead and try this whiskey. We've wasted too much time here. Feels awkward trying this again. Not too much this time. Let's put a little bit of water inside of here. Okay, that should be good. You could see the nice oily look inside of there when you first pour in that water. You could see it mixing with the whiskey. Swish this around a bit to get that mixed up well. Very nice color to this. By law, inside the United States, you're not allowed to color your whiskey with uh, caramel coloring like, like most do when their whiskey has been aged only three years and a day. They do that to make it look older. But in the United States, by law, no whiskey has coloring added to it. So this is the natural color. But still kind, kind of a light color, but still it, it has its color to it. Uh, the other thing about bourbon whiskey by law, you have to use corn in the process of making it. That is required by, by law. Whereas inside of other places, it's just whatever you decide to experiment with or however you want to make it, you make it that way. This one has a very light smell. Not floral, not a, a kind of alcohol -y, just very, very, very slightly. On a 100% scale, the, the magnitude that you can smell the alcohol is probably at a 5 or 10% of that. So not a strong alcohol smell, but it is there. 
uh, slightly vanilla there's some other notes there citrusy a little bit citrusy but not strong at all smell leaves a lot to be desired you can hardly pick up anything on this it's so light Taste, on the other hand, also very light, very easy, very smooth. This one does not pack the strength as many whiskeys do. In fact, this could possibly be the lightest whiskey that I've ever drank before uh, to date. Uh, for me, um, yeah, very, very light. Although that vanilla smell is there on the nose, it's definitely not there on the taste. The taste is a little bit more honey. Mm. You can't taste any oak or or wood inside of this one. Hmm. I remember last night the very first sip that I had of this. I was a little bit impressed. But then I had a second and third sip and now I try it again this morning. The more I have it, the more I become unsatisfied with it. I was highly satisfied with that first sip, but now I'm becoming more unsatisfied. It leaves a lot to be desired. It's not bad by any measure. Definitely, like I said, you want to share it with your friends and things like that. Help get people into whiskey with this one. And uh, you could recommend for them to buy it because it's not going to break the bank for anybody. But definitely not going to probably ever revisit this. There's no reason to. You try it once and say that you've had it and then, then pretty much that's it. Last night, I said inside of my first review before that got lost to the ravages of time and autofocus destruction. I said the very last bourbon whiskey that I had tried prior to this one was three months ago. It was uh, the Maker's Mark. Uh, that was not for a review. That was just personally in a bar. I had that. I said, I think that this one is a little bit better than that in terms of taste that one is very strong but um, wow uh, they're equal in their own ways this one very weak very light that one a little bit strong with more of a kick and a and a punch that'll that'll get you but um, not similar, uh, but both leave a lot to be desired. Would I place this above Maker's Mark personally for me? This one is leaning towards the palette that I like a little bit more than Maker's Mark. That one was a little bit too heavy for me. I really like sweet things and that I don't think that one was all that sweet. 
uh, if recollection serves me right. So I like sweet things. I like uh, some light highlands. I like uh, space sides. I like bourbon. Yeah, this is all right. Just give it a try. And after that one night of satisfaction and fun, yeah, you don't need to come back to it. Anyways, gentlemen, I would like to thank you for watching this review over the Four Roses Bourbon, a.k.a. the Yellow Label. I'm planning on going to that distillery soon. I'll try to have that review up for you. And um, make sure that you drink responsibly. As always, a gentleman knows his limits. And I will see you guys in the next one. And until next time, salute. Keep it classy.